And with a knock on the door, UPS is kind of like Santa Claus. We've got four boxes here. Got another five on the truck coming. Then we'll get those inside. What's up guys? As you can see behind me, the weather's not so good on the weekend. So we're gonna do some inside projects today. I've had the couch sitting in here for a couple weeks. So let's get that sectional started. We'll get back to the truck videos, hopefully next weekend or sometime during the week. Let's go. Welcome to my family room. Within the throne that I sit upon is the home reserve, I guess, custom sectional sofa. What I've selected is going to be a U-shaped sofa that will replace my box throne. Let's get started. It's like playing with the refrigerator box when you're a kid. <laughs> We're gonna turn this into a U-shaped sectional that matches the trial chair, which we did in the last video. So if you haven't seen that, I'll link that somewhere here and take a look at that. It's in my playlist. It's under the uh, home reserve trial sofa. Got a lot going on today in addition to that. I'm gonna take this sofa and swap it out with the art station over here. My daughter does her art over here. You guys saw last time, if you watched the video on the trial chair, that we do our educational stuff over here. This is where we learn about the days of the week. We do math and writing and little passports, everything like that. I'm gonna rearrange this a little bit and maybe use the space under the board over there to get her art stuff set up. That way I can reuse that space and take the couch and put it there. Okay, so the way this works, for those of you who didn't see the uh, trial assembly video of the chair that I'm sitting in right now, is you go onto the Home Reserve website and you order a trial chair in the fabric that you want with the style pillows that you want that fit your, I guess, design or idea of design. Once you have that chair, you now have part of the sofa that you're gonna be building in the future. If you don't like it, you return it, send it back to them. If you do like it, you're gonna need the rest of the components of the sofa. Just like last time, I'm not building on the uh, carpet over there where you guys are. I'm gonna be building over here because as you take the wood out of these boxes, there are gonna be splinters and shavings, etc. because it is carved wood. And I'd rather have that over here because it's easier to clean up. Let's keep going. It's the top of our ottoman, the cushion. We're gonna put this over on the carpet, keep it clean. Got a bag with our fabrics. This will also go out of the way. All of our components, which are screws, the uh, plastic nuts for the screws basically, sandpaper, some gloves. That's what we're going for. And this time, everything that is numbered, everything that should be numbered is numbered. And the panel on top has the handles that I showed you. Every chair is gonna have the plastic feet which slip on the ends of the wood. They look like these. You guys can see those. There's only one way to put those on, no way to screw them up. You're gonna have these slip-in little plastic nuts that the screws lock into. That's basically how all these go together. Unless they're press fit pieces, you can see the little um, ends, some of them are squared off like this, and those actually fit together. These screw between the two chairs to hold the sofa together. So that's it, not a lot of components. What I'm doing here is putting the feet on parts two, three, and four. And then all the parts, two, three, four, six, and seven are getting the plastic nuts, we're gonna call them. Let's get them together. Once you start snapping them together, it's like Legos, they just start fitting. Good to go.
All right, so in just a few minutes, this is basically the whole box. So we've got our box assembled for the ottoman. We're gonna have our bottoms, and we're gonna have our cover piece here. Inside your fabric bag, you're gonna to wanna to pull out the white sheet of soft fabric, and you're gonna to wanna to pull out the one piece. These are gonna be for the top of the ottoman, which is gonna be for this pillow. Now we're gonna take our pillow, put the top of the ottoman, and we're gonna put it right on top of this here, like this. And then we're gonna fold it inside of the soft fabric. This will allow us to slip it inside the cover very easily. Now, a little tip, actually, before I do this. One side of the ottoman top is completely flat, and the other side has a rounded edge. The rounded edge is obviously gonna be facing up. The flat side is gonna go down towards the piece of wood that I just showed you. Make sure when you put your pillow inside that the flat part goes towards the small pocket on the outside of this pillow sham. You have the large opening here, which is gonna be for this, and then you have the small opening, which is gonna to be to slide the piece of wood in to give it stability or rigidity. So make sure your flat side of the pillow is facing against this pocket here. Otherwise, you're gonna to have to redo this. So you'll notice the flat side of the pillow is right up against the pocket here. That way I can slide the wood into here. Now let me adjust this and get it all fit correctly. So you see we did the flat side here, pocket is still here. Now this is what gives the top this round shape, is your rounded pillow. Now you're gonna need part number eight. And this is gonna slide into that pocket I just showed you. Just slide it right into that pocket. And now we'll just put this off to the side. This part is done for right now. Now we'll take our remaining fabric from the bag and that's going to be to cover the lower half of the ottoman. Okay, the cover for the base, these little black flaps that are here. In the instructions, it'll probably say tan flaps, but the black flaps is what they're talking about. They're not talking about the tan hook and loop, the Velcro. These black flaps stay up. So you want your Velcro on the very bottom because we're gonna flip this over and tighten this Velcro around the bottom. So find one of your corners. There we go. So if you get about one inch or so on every corner, you should be able to slide the whole thing over. Now you just work your way around corner to corner to corner. You want to make sure these seams right here stay in the very corner or next to it. It's much easier to correct if you do it while it's up high. Once it's at the bottom, you're not going to be able to twist this over. So these seams right here, you can see this seam right here. You don't want them way off of your corners because it's gonna throw the entire thing at an angle. You want this right here at the center of this. You want one at the center here. And then these two here 
are going to be one for this section here and one for this section here. So pay attention to your corners as you're sliding everything over because once it's on, it's gonna look funny if these aren't where the corners are. Let's get this straightened out and I'll bring you in for a close up. Okay, so before you flip this, you can see that I've got one of the flaps in the center of each side, two in the centers of each of the actual sides or those sides. This is nice and tight. The corner seam is in the corner on this side and on this side. These will just have the stitches across the top. You'll have to eyeball them. So keep your eye on the two sides, there's two corners here that have the opposing corners here. Keep your eyes on those seams and that's how you line up your corners. Now we're gonna flip this upside down on a clean area so we can get all the flaps tightened to the Velcro as you can see here. Give me one second. Okay, so once you have this upside down, you're gonna flip the Velcro towards the inside like so. And then you're gonna start assembling the hook and loop here or Velcro. So take this, get it nice and tight, wrapped over, and then pull up your little flap here. You'll be able to see it better when I get onto these sides. I want that nice and tight. That way this is very smooth on the sides. You shouldn't see any bumps or ripples in it. And the way to do that is to keep tightening all around as you go. Tuck in these corners like this. For a close up, so you can see here. I'm matching the black and the red where it meets right on the inside corner here. And the goal is to get them all like that. So, this one here, you can see I went a little too far on this side here, so I'm going to pull that back a little bit. This way, all of this red, like this one here, sits flush. So, when you have your top here sitting on top, you're not going to see anything. You'll just have the red right here folded over. All right, so the last two pieces of wood are number nine. And number 10, every single piece of wood that is used in this is gonna have a soft side and it's gonna have a rough side. You're definitely gonna wanna put the soft side up. So slide the first piece that you want. In this case, we're gonna take 10. So we're gonna take number 10 here and we're gonna slide it over all the work we just did here with the black tabs and that'll slide and lock in on all four corners here. And this is gonna create the bottom of the inside of our ottoman. We'll take number nine, same thing, soft side up. I got my helper here. Hi. All right. We're gonna do soft side up right into the corner here. Get that tongue in first. And then the two center pieces here are also gonna sl slip together here. So we're gonna have to get these to fit together. Okay, let's get these side pieces pulled far enough apart to slip together. So we'll lift this up. We'll lift the center of this one up here. We'll line up 
the two grooves together in the middle, like so. And then once I push down, it'll lock everything into place. All right, ready? There we go. Now we have a flush. All right, the easy way to do this is to use the hole in number 10 as a finger guide here to pull this up and down and slide number nine into number 10 while holding number 10 and then just push them down in the middle and you'll have a flat bottom. Now, all we need is the top, right? Yeah. Okay, now the way this fits is the wood inside on the bottom that's inside the bottom of the top pillow here is made to fit into a recess in the bottom portion. So once you slip it in here, it's actually slipping into the recess. There you go. And once again, for reference, I'm 205 pounds today. I think I was 208 pounds last time or whatever, but anything right around there, it's all the same, right? So 205 pounds, there's no creak, there's no issues, there's no squeaking, I can sit on this. The top is very comfortable, it's got more than enough cushion, but that's not what we're gonna use it for, so give me a second. So we wanna be watching that. So let's get this set up over here. Put this like so. Let's get our chair basically where it's gonna be. So when it's all said and done, let's get a little farther back so you guys can see what we're doing here. All right, so you'll notice I did not get the little 20 inch or 18 inch square ottomans. What I did is I bought three of these. So I can go one, two, three. This side here is gonna be a long sofa just like this. Let me show you, I'm six feet tall. Hold on a second. So I can sit comfortably with my feet here. I can definitely lay down, throw a pillow behind my head, be nice and comfortable while watching the television. And so can everybody else because everybody in this house is shorter than moi. We're going to bring in my daughter, who's hiding over there, to test out the new chair in Ottoman. Let's go. Give it a shot. What do we think? Healthy. Yes? Are we in TV mode? Lay down. Get in TV mode. I really like it. Ladies and gentlemen, you heard the word. Let's get back to work. Quick tip for the Ottomans. You'll notice there's a slight gap here, the alignment. And on this side, it's pushed over a little bit on this side. And the way to fix that is all related to the piece of wood here and where it's positioned in the pocket. If you pull, if you push the piece of wood farther that way, it will shift the pillow this way. If you pull it a little bit back this way, it'll center the pillow or shift it towards the other side. So if you pull this out a little bit of the pillow here, when you tuck it back in, it's gonna readjust it. And I'm gonna show you that in a second here. So now you see by shifting that, I pulled the little piece of wood out a little bit in the pocket, not enough to show or anything like that, just farther this direction. And now you'll see this lines up smooth here, here, and that gap is gone on this side, it lines up smooth. Now, if you wanted to, let's say you're moving this piece a lot, what you could do is on the underside of here, you could put a couple thumbtacks under here. You could put a couple thumbtacks under here so this piece doesn't move. This way, when you're lifting it up and putting it down, this wood never shifts. That way it'll always be centered because once it locks into place, your gaps should always be equal on both sides. And if they're not, like I said, it's because that piece of wood underneath the top is shifting. So if you put, you know, four thumbtacks in the corners underneath this thing, that would solve the problem from the wood moving. And I probably will do that myself on all of them because I know my kids are going to be lifting that up and down and I don't want it to be shifting because if there was a gap here, that would annoy me if I looked at it. So it's up to you if you want to mess with that or not. That's really just a personal preference type of thing. Next up on the chopping block, let's get this corner piece unpacked and built up. Let me get you on the tripod. This is our corner of the sectional. That's what we're going for. 
You can see these wood pieces can be flipped either way. I like to lay them down on the floor like this in the exact position so I can see the numbers the same way as they are in the picture. And then I slide the T-nuts into the locations requested. into the grooves here. There's no actual screws holding these in. They'll get locked into place when you lock these off. here and work on the top side. There we go. A little gentle persuasion. So I definitely would hit it with a hammer because this wood will split. You could probably put a block on top and tap it in that way if you wanted to. Um, maybe a little cut off piece of a two by four and just give it a little tap and that'll get into place. If you've got hands, they'll work too. But uh, if um, your hands aren't strong enough, definitely put a block over this. Do not hit these individual pieces with a hammer because this press board will rip to shreds. Since we saw number 11 was kind of tight, we're gonna start it in this position so we can put a little pressure on it. Let's see how tight this one is. All right, see? That's really just an issue with their machine because this is a bit less tight. It's opening already on this end. So once again, we're gonna give this a little tap. And to do that, we're just gonna put another piece of wood right on top of it. So I'm actually just gonna use, uh, we're actually just gonna use number 17. We're gonna put this right on top of here and give it a good whack. Nice and flush. Actually went a tad too far. There we go. Just push against it to line everything up. Now on this side, you're gonna have one on the bottom, one on the top. So we'll get the top one first, push this over, line it up. And then we gotta get this one here on the side. I'm gonna spin this around, because number 13 needs to go here. this. Now we're going to flip this to the other side because we're going to have to do the same thing for this one. Okay, 
And last but not least, the one right here. So I find it a lot easier to flip these around and move it wherever it's easier for you to work because these little pieces of wood here, you definitely don't wanna be cracking anything because then you're gonna to have to request a new one. I don't think they would, it, it's pretty strong, but if you're gonna beat on it, there's definitely the possibility of breaking it. So better safe than sorry. Let's stand this back up. And as you can see, we're getting closer. So the curve of 15 is gonna to go towards the inside right here, like this. Make sure we got all of our little black pieces in here. Before we lock this in place, let's make sure that we got all of our little, uh, there we go. 15 and 16 each have two screws. One at the bottom, one at the top. One right here. One up here. Same thing on this side. One at the top. Same thing for this side. Okay. Number 17 is our center brace. I would guess it probably goes just like that. So for those of you building these, it's probably a good idea to have a little uh, maybe a cut off piece of a two by four or some sort of maybe an eight inch by four inch block piece of wood and either a rubber mallet or a hammer to hit the top of that block so you can seat those bits that are tight into the other portions. That'll definitely make it a bit easier. If you're hitting on one side and not the other, you could definitely crack the wood. So a piece of wood to go across the top and a mallet will save you some time. A quick run over with the uh Shop vac took care of everything on the floor, took care of all the insides of both of these little pockets. I'm gonna quickly wash my hands. As you can see, the wood and everything is quite dirty. Then we'll get the fabric on here. Be right back. Okay, the first things I'm gonna need are the two top rail pieces, which are in right here. Now let's get our top pieces in. These pieces are gonna sit right in here. There's gonna be an angle piece. Those two angles are 45 degrees. They're gonna butt together right here like so. And just push it back and make sure that this 45 degree angle is in the corner and then start your next piece right here. There we go. And that's our top cushion. Let's get our back on. It's going to go on this side here. Wrap it right into the corner. Here. And same thing on this side here. Kind of wiggle this piece by piece to get it into position here. So we want these corners nice and tight and make sure that your um, foam pieces don't roll up underneath it like this one just did. So we gotta unroll that, tuck it back in. Bring this into the corner. Make sure your corner seam is right in the corner. Trying to line this corner up perfectly here so I can tuck it. There we go. And I'll 
want this to run right down the corner seam here. I'll work my way around to this side. right into the lining here on the outside is an elastic band. You're going to want to take those elastic bands and hook them under here and that's going to keep your fabric nice and tight. You can already see that that's removed the crease across the back here. So let's take these, hook it right underneath there. Okay, let's get to the pillows now. All right, let's work on our biggest cushion first. Seat cushion here. Move this out of the way. And if you look carefully right here, you'll see top front. This is going to be the top front, so we'll get this into our covered part of the uh, pillow sham. Let's get that on there. It comes completely apart, except for right here. This is top front. Good thing is, if you mess up on your first try, you'll get it on your second try. That's good. So the most important part is this, because this is your front, and then whichever side you want is your top. In my case, it's this one right here. So it would sit back into the cushion like this. Okay, the last step is for the smaller and larger pillow for the back. Those are the two pillows in here. You got a larger one, and you got the smaller one. Get these corners nice and crisp, and it's going to go just like that. So let's stuff this in here, like so. Wedge the corner up into the corner here. Same thing from the other side. Make sure we fill up all the empty space at the top. Flip the lip over. Zip it up. One down, one to go. Now it would seem that this doesn't have the fun instruction as this chair did that you're supposed to beat it up onto the floor, but we're still gonna that way it'll get into the corners and take its shape nice, because that's the back and that's the front. Make sure our pillows are completely untucked in the corners and then we're going to line it up the way it's gonna sit. Get the larger side in first. Get it up into this little corner here so it's not left on the floor. Alright. Same thing. Flip the lip, zip it up. Here's 19. Here's 18. side and our short side. There we go. Got 
comfy. Be very careful cutting against the tops or bottoms of these boxes because one side will have your fabric and pillows in it. You don't want to cut through it. See what I mean? There's my fabric right on top. Definitely don't want to be cutting into these. We're going to see that right in the back here. And the way this works is you slide it into the front piece here, like so, lock it in, pull it tight to these two corners here, like so, one corner, this one, two corners, and then we're going to lift it and flip it underneath the bottom. It's got to go right in the corner here, like that. Same thing with this side. We'll lift it, pull it really tight, and flip it into the corner. If you did it right, you should be right on the seam, on the top and the bottom, on both sides. That should be tight. And there should be no lines in your fabric. All right. Let's get on to our back piece. So over here. Try and keep your corners on your corners. It's easier because you're not going to be able to twist it and pull it once you get it tightened down. Just do it a little bit at a time. Go nice and slow. Try and keep the finished product here away from the wood so you don't tear or pull any threads. So keep it like this, upside down. And when you're pulling down, pull it like this. With the outside, outside. That way this doesn't touch the wood. So get it nice and tight against the foam here up top. There we go. And then just like the other piece in the front, we pull it underneath it and flip. So stick your thumb in here, pull it underneath, and flip it through. Same with this side. Lift it, pull it under, and flip it through. You want to pull the corners into the corner so the seam runs straight. Just like that. Same with this side. Lift it up. Get that seam right in the corner, right here. So this seam runs right up the corner here. See that seam? You want it to run right up the corner. There we go. Nice and flat. Perfect on both sides. And right here. Okay, on the big pillow, which is going to be your bottom seat cushion, You'll notice one side has some angles and a thinner top. The bottom is completely square. This is the front of your cushion. So this goes in the side with no zipper. You can see that the cover has the exact same shape as the pillow. There we go. So our bottom cushion is done. Pop your corners all the way out so the pillow can fill the whole case. There we go. Now, horizontally. Your pillow's gonna slide in, the lines are gonna be horizontal. Not vertical, horizontal. Slide it in. Same thing, just gonna give it a little squeeze, like so, and zip it closed. Now with this one, to get it to flush, give it a beating on both sides.
That'll get it right into those corners. And as you can see, we're coming right along. Once you do one, you can really zip right through these. It's coming out perfect. Now the seam will disappear once I bolt the chairs together. Right now they're not bolted together, they're just sitting there. But underneath the fabric, here and here, there's a bolt area. And with each one of these come a set of bolts, washers, wing nuts, so you can pull the chairs together. Let's get the next one over here. Keep going. So at this point, we're not even looking at the instructions anymore. This is side chair number three. I'm gonna bang this out really quick, get it into place over there, and then we'll click back on the camera. Put you in the tripod, and I'll be right back. You guys see the time, that's p.m. It's 11.15 p.m., and it's just me and the princess hanging out. Little one, let's get this pillow on chair number three. Pick up this side right here, just like that. Put it onto that chair right there. Lay it down right on top. Turn it, no, pick it up. This is the front. Lift it up. You gotta do it up like this. And slide it back like that. There we go. And now this one. Hold on, let me see the back of it. Let me see the upside down part. There we go, just like this. Go ahead, lay it on the chair. Zipper down. Nope, turn it towards you one time. Just like that. There we go. Excellent. Very nice work. I would like you to test out the chair. Go ahead. Coffee. Another good one? Good one, good one. All right. Okay, now we have our right side end, our left side end, and two more of these ottomans. We're down to the last four boxes. I'm gonna build one more of the four boxes left. That way I get probably either one side chair done or at least an ottoman or two. And then I'll bang out what's left in the morning so I can work on editing this probably Sunday night. That way I can get this out to you guys sometime on Monday. 